Okay, everybody, we're getting ready to start here. Everyone's clicking on. Putting my shirt on here. Oh, or my dress shirt. <laughs> I, was, I was always wearing clothes. <laughs> okay, and three, two, one. Boom! Mic's on, everything, we're ready to go. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to my studio here in Vancouver, Canada. My name is Michael Markowski. I'm going to be showing you how to do some drawings today. I'm super excited because I think today we're really going to learn a lot about how to take all these different techniques we've been doing over the past uh, three classes so far, put them together to make some new drawings that are going to really excite us and you're I think you're really going to be surprised by how much you already know uh, I mean based on just what we've learned so far so we're going to put it all together and to create some new artworks uh, let me see I'm just going to turn this light on here um, okay so let me see uh, what are the little housekeeping things I want to get uh, cleared away right at the beginning? If uh, you have any drawings you'd like for me to see and to critique and to give you feedback on, please send them to my Instagram, to my Twitter or Facebook. And if you do so, please in the comments say, tell me where it is so that I can kind of take a look for it and find it and I'll give you some feedback at the end of the episode in about one hour and uh, that'll be a because some because the, the formal lesson is going to be about an hour and then at the very end there's some time for chat and for asking me all sorts of other random questions that maybe haven't been answered yet so uh, please do that I see there's already a couple of people who've um, who've uploaded drawings so I'm excited to check those out and to uh, and to help, um, maybe they're already perfect. Uh, I haven't seen them yet, so let's. I can't wait to, to, to do that. Other things, if you like this video, please like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and if you're really, really excited and you want to support the channel, please send a dollar or a hundred dollars or um, the keys to your boat <laughs> through the PayPal link in below. Yeah, and uh, my wife is there following along she says yeah markowski art m-a-r-k-o-w-s-k-y art is my links on every social media that i know of uh, and they're all in the description below i digress okay so are you ready to do some drawing you've got your pencils um and you've got your erasers I don't <laughs> get that out here, all of this stuff here. I'm currently in the middle of doing all sorts of setup in the studio, so everything is uh, around here somewhere. Where is it? So, let's jump right into... Um, you know what? I'm just going to show you something kind of a little bit uh, random, perhaps, but I've, it's something that just was on my mind. I was looking through this... National Geographic magazine, well, this is probably from like last summer or something, yeah, well, 2018, on Picasso, and um, one of the things I just thought was kind of randomly interesting was just this little graph, and you probably aren't going to be able to see much of the details on your computer or monitor or television screen, but this is a chart showing how much art Picasso made uh, at any given time throughout the course of his life, starting in 1890, uh, well, he's eight years old, so he's barely making anything. Towards the end of his life, he's at 91, and he's, you know, he kind of fell off a little bit, as to be expected for a 91-year-old guy. But um, you could see that there are times where he's super productive, like this, and it's not even a year, this is like a quarter, so that thing, you know, like January to April or something. He made 398 works, followed by, you know, uh, the next short period of time where he makes like less than a quarter of that and then there are times here where he's 
looks like he's barely making anything at all. And I just wanted to, to point that out because artists go through periods of times of high productivity and times where um, you're not making much of anything. And some would say actually it's important for artists to take a break or anybody in general, right? That uh, sometimes just trying to squeeze blood from a stone is just not going to work and it's going to frustrate you. And um, so it's okay to take a break. It doesn't mean that you're, that you're a bad artist or a failure. It's just part of the creative process. And Picasso, despite some other shortcomings, you know, is an example of somebody who is known to be highly prolific. And so that was kind of interesting for me to see that um, his process kind of nosedived a little bit at times. And I always use this roller coaster metaphor for um, what it feels like sometimes when you're making artwork. And I'll probably come back to that, that metaphor as we go here. So we've got your sketchbook. Let's do a little bit of a warm up, right? So we, you hopefully you were practicing some warm ups maybe before this, and we talked about warm ups in the last uh, class. So how about? Let me see. I even have some. We can go back to a page. Well, you know, let's let's do a a warm up on here, and uh, we did some little dots before. So I'm going to put some dots on this page. Oops, you can't really see what I'm doing, can you? Um, so I'm going to put some dots here all over the place. And before we were kind of connecting the lines really quickly, so I'm just going to do a few of those to kind of get started. Right, again, you look, I'm still warming up myself, right? This is why it's helpful for anybody to do a little bit of a warm up. Now, after I've done a few of these, today we're going to talk a little bit about doing some arcs, right? Which is kind of like uh, a curved line, maybe part of a sphere or a circle or a uh, ellipse, right? So this time, instead of trying to go do a straight line, I'm going to try to draw like a, a curve, right? And so again, it requires doing a little bit of this um, the, the golf swing thing I talk about, right? So you can even go back on lines that or dots that you've used previously, and we can kind of create some um, abstract images. So just a quick little warm up here. And you know, who knows, there are, it's possible you create something here that you could use as a, you know, as a, as a drawing. I mean, potentially, if you spend some time working on something like this, you might end up with a really cool pattern or abstract image. So don't just, uh, don't just throw it away afterwards. In fact, I always recommend that people never throw out drawings because I, 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 I often I have all these old sketchbooks and sometimes I'm flipping through them and drawing is a really powerful memory device, mnemonic device. And there are times where I, I can I can remember exactly the situation of sitting. I know where I was, like I know the the bus and the time of day, the smells like the feelings I had while I was working on the drawing, and I can remember thinking like, this is an awful drawing. Ugh. And I can remember turning the page in disgust. And then I'm looking at it again, maybe 20 years later and thinking, whoa, this is a really cool drawing. Like, how did I, what was I, you know, uh, how did I even come up with this? Like, I'm so surprised. So I always think sometimes we're creating things that are far better than than we think we're capable of doing, um, that we realize at the time. And when it's on the page, it, it is kind of startling to us. And we think like, oh, I don't recognize this. This is, uh, and because we don't recognize it, we fear it and we m might think there's something wrong with it. And then sometimes it just takes time for us to start appreciating it. 
um, and to and to understand its quality. And you know that's what they talk about, like you know the impressionists or any other group of artists who are making artwork that the, you know, let's say the public or critics despised at first. You know, while it's it was just like so new that people didn't didn't have any language or understanding to to process it and and that's not just that doesn't just apply to critics it applies to artists who like yourself who you know the the saying goes are our own worst enemies right so uh, i'm just gonna do a few more of these and i hope you're still drawing and warming up even while i was blabbing on there I guess, you know, as I'm working on this, I'm thinking, ah, you know, like, you, your drawing might be something totally different than this, um, which is, which is great, you know, maybe, who knows what, what your drawing looks like, if you are really happy with it, I'd love to see it, send it, uh, send it to me in all the different ways that you can, okay, I'm feeling I'm feeling the creative juices starting to flow here, um, and not I'm, I don't know why I'm but these they don't all have to look the same as well, right? I'm just this is also you know a great thing. Little doodles like this. What I love about doodling is that you can do it while your uh, kind of analytical part of your brain is doing something else. Like you can kind of multitask while doing this. That's why I say you can practice some of these basic exercises while you're on hold on the phone or sitting at a bus stop or listening to music or you're zooming with some friends <laughs> or Facebook or blue jeans or what are all the other, you know, Skype, all the other different formats of things that uh, Microsoft Teams, all these things that, am I the only person who feels like everybody's using a different live streaming app to, or conferencing app, and you have to sign in, anyway, <laughs> okay, so we've got a little sketch down here, and I'm just going to pull up um, the, the handout that I usually give to students, and Eventually, I'm going to make all of this, uh, I'll, I'll make a Dropbox link for people who want to download this kind of stuff. Okay, so what we want to do now, we've got a little warm-up, is let's, um, I'm going to take, the, again, this is the size of my sketchbook, right? You can see the bottom of the page down there. Um, so it's not, it's not a huge sketchbook, it's the size of a piece of paper. And I'm going to practice drawing a line. I'm going to draw another line, and I'm making a box, and then I'm going to divide the box in half, and look at mine, mine is, I got a, I'm practicing my curved lines there, and uh, divide it again, so we've got kind of like a window here. Now, if you didn't have enough room here, you could draw two boxes on one page and just go to the next page and draw a couple more boxes. There's, it's, we're just still in the process of doing a little bit of a warm up, and we're gonna do a little callback to last week's episode as we begin here. So, last week or last class uh, on uh, Tuesday, we were drawing a cube, and then we uh, rendered it in a few different ways. In fact, why am I just explaining it when it's just a few pages back here? Right, so on Tuesday we did uh, this kind of thing here. Right, so we uh, shade. We did three different ways to shade an object. So um, we did some hatching, and then we did some cross hatching, and then we did some blending. So shading is kind of the the overall blanket term for when you use cross hatching and hatching to render an object and to give it volume so that it appears to um, have three dimensions and kind of come off of the page, right? So hatching is just the, the mark making technique, but shading is the application of that technique. So just so I get my, um, 
the uh, the wording of things correctly. Okay, so we did that. What we're going to do is we're going to go to um, some other objects which we've done in the past. Let's see. How about the the next one? Let's we're going to draw a cylinder. So we're going to start by drawing a ellipse. All right, so we did one on the top. I'm gonna draw another one down here, but this one's gonna, I'm gonna draw very, 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 very lightly, right? So that I can, if I want to erase, and I, I don't know if you can, I'm trying to draw lightly, but then not too lightly, because I want you to be able to see. You could draw yours even li more lightly, lighter. Uh, okay, and then I'm gonna connect these edges Right, and then as I, I wanted to, to to draw the bottom of this cylinder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of curve. It's it's like uh, how to describe this is I'm curving up. We want this to curve up, and then and we can even do that on the other side here, curving, and then this connecting. Uh, the difference is, maybe I'll just, on this other page here, um, often, let's say people are drawing, I'll do, do two side by side. We've got this, and this kind of, this, we talked about this at the end of last class um, in the question, the Q&A afterwards. So often when people are drawing a cylinder, we get something, oops, this is, uh, this kind of a thing, where if I zoom in on this, what we see is a like a point, right? These two things are points. And we want it not to point, but to fluidly kind of wrap around, if that makes sense. So, so that it, it just kind of curves and disappears behind that line. So if you're finding you're getting these kind of sharp, kind of almost like an L shape or a little bit of an L shape, think about rounding it out even. So it's, it just takes a little bit of practice. And you know, if you weren't happy with something like this, you could just kind of erase that edge and then come in and you're, it's like you're sanding the corner off, if that makes sense. It's like you've got a little piece of sandpaper, and you're just kind of going around that edge and doing a little bit of sanding. Okay, so um, so we've got one cylinder here, and if you've drawn kind of a little bit darker, then you can erase a little bit. One thing I just noticed is, you know, when I did this erasing on the other page, and it left a little bit of residue. It's a good thing to kind of, sometimes if I'm working on a really nice drawing, rather than just taking my eraser and just starting to erase, is just take a quick second to look and see if there if there's any kind of charcoal or graphite residue on it. And if there is, it's just to kind of rub it off on your sketchbook and then use it, All right? Um, where's my squishy eraser? Well, uh, my favorite eraser, the kneaded eraser, is around here somewhere. I was in the midst of cleaning and moving. Anyway, we'll use we'll use uh, this the gum eraser. So, last class we we did again, you know this um, uh, the value scale, right? And so we had. You know, one being the darkest and eight being where light was hitting a shape, right? So, and then we experimented with the cube. And so you could say on these cubes that this area right here was, let's say, an eight. And then in the shadow was a one. And then let's say this was a three in terms of the level, right? So eight, three, one. 
and the top was maybe a six. Does that make sense? Right, so if we think about like those swatches, so let's do the same sort of thing here. Um, to begin with, I'm gonna divide this cylinder. I'm just gonna draw a light line on here in half, and then I'm gonna divide it again in half. This is why you don't wanna draw shapes that are too small, otherwise it can be a little bit tricky. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four columns. Let's just keep on going and let's add another one in between each of them. And, you know, they're not all perfect here. Let me see, I'm just gonna switch to a different view here. Okay, so let's again, let's imagine we have, and I try not to draw like little you know, uh, like a little sun, because um, we're, we're real artists and we want to try to draw something a little bit more complicated, like a light bulb, right? So our light bulb is off here on the side. And so the light is coming here. So we can imagine that this, if we go, uh, that the light hitting this is number eight. Right, and then, in fact, we can even draw a little shadow on here. And let's just make this a black, you know, number one shape right here. Okay, so we're also going to go right to the blending method here for this cylinder. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to skip this first area because that's number eight. And then we're going to go, this is going to be number seven. All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit of pencil line. And then let's go on to number six here. And I'm going to go over it a little bit. So it's a little bit darker. And then number five. And then number four. And you could you could also see, look how I'm holding the pencil here. Like look how far away my hand is from the tip of the pencil. Like you would never hold a pencil or a pen like this if you were writing, you know, in your journal or something. It would be it would be really hard. Why I'm holding the pencil like this is that it it sort of makes it very difficult for me to accidentally press too hard on my pencil right whereas if i'm really choked up my um you know like on a baseball bat or on a, the pencil if i'm really close to the to the point then it's more likely that i'm going to use it like i do a pencil to write you know in my checkbook Right? Whereas when I'm holding far away like this, I'm more likely to use the side of the pencil rather than the tip. And I'm also going, it's, it just takes longer. I have to be more patient. So this is a way, you know, if, if some of you are just like really heavy handed with, your, with the way that you draw, this helps kind of prevent that from happening. So I'm getting all the way here. This is number two. And then I can look at this and I can go, okay, is this, is this a nice gradient from one to the other? And I, I can squint my eyes like I'm pretending to sleep. And then I look at it and I go, well, I think we're doing pretty good here. And then we kind of, the last few started to blend together. Okay, well, let's just go back over some of these. Let's add a little bit of this number two here was too much like a number three or four. So I'm gonna come in and darken that. And then I go, well, now that I think about it, actually this here needs to be darker too. So let's darken that. All right. And then, so this, you know, again, I can always, I can, it's easier to go darker it's harder to lighten the drawing up again. 
Okay, so. Um, so I'm not sure how... I, I don't, I don't want to go too fast for people, but I don't know where people are at. Usually, when I'm doing this, I can just kind of wander around a classroom and check in on people. And I see some people are sitting there, they're finished, and they're on their phone. And some people are, you know, just still drawing the shadow. Or, um, so, if you're here ready to go to the next one, then we're going to sort of do this again with a slight little twist. So... I'm going to draw another cylinder here. Okay, drawing lightly. And then I'm going to add the edges. And maybe, you know, while I'm here, let's just draw this shadow. Now, technically, I would probably draw the shadow a little bit different than I would for this one if this was actually the, the light source. Um, but... Uh, you know, that's kind of a much more advanced kind of uh, a class that we're, we're not going to have time to to cover, like drawing shadows, because shadows are, are fascinating. I, I've been reading a book for years, and it's one of those books that is, I just start, and then I, I read like a chapter, and then I got to put it down, because I just think, mind explosion. Um, and it's called, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but... I think it's just called Shadows, or the History of Shadows, or... Um, anyway, what's so fascinating is is how Im important shadows really are um, to s all sorts of different uh, um, technologies, and uh, it's kind of like the... it's It's this thing that you know, technically is the absence of something, right? but yet it's, we always refer to, so it's, it's like the number zero, you know, it's, it's not there, but we, um, because it's the absence of light, it's, it's nothing, it's like the, the lack of something, and yet we've named it, um, okay, so we've done this, uh, um, cylinder, and, uh, I'm just looking at a comment here. I'm, I usually try to wait till the very end, but the question is, Shannon is saying, if we go too dark, do we basically have to erase it all and start it all over again? Um, <clears throat> good question. It's the... It, it, it sort of depends. Um, it depends on how dark you're actually talking about. You know, if, let's say... I'll, you know, I'm just going to show you on my drawing here. So let's say I went like this. Oh my goodness, what did I do? Oh my goodness, I just went way too dark there. Bad, 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 bad. So, I could try using my eraser. I'll show you what happens. Again, I'm going to just make sure there's no, no residue there. I'm going to try using this eraser to suck up some of these pencil marks inside. Now, I don't know if you can see... It's, doesn't quite come across really well, but I've kind of made, especially with this eraser, it's not only just erasing, but it also happened to kind of like smudge some things a little bit. So you really have to kind of erase a lot. I can try to mend this, like once using the eraser or to draw over top of it, but I always find it somehow kind of leaves a little bit of a hint of its former self, um, which in, uh, in drawing, we, we use the term erasure, not eraser, but erasure, like erase, sure, I'll have a box of donuts, <laughs> and, uh, and, and that it, it means that you're erasing something, but it's still, it's, it's the, the evidence of erasing, right? There's still, um, and, and artists actually use this for really interesting effects to, um, to kind of suggest maybe movement of a person. Like, so you, let's say have, you draw a person throwing a baseball and you draw their arm a few different times and you erase those. So we actually see kind of the, the, the hand where it used to be. And that could create a really cool effect of, to simulate the movement 
Anyway, um, so this, I've, I've actually done an okay job at fixing that situation, but you might still see that there was a little bit of a problem there. The other way to do this is, let's say I did go too heavy here. So I'm just gonna go continue to work on this. If I did that, then the rather than starting all over again, what I need to do is now say, I gotta make everything else a little bit darker as I go here. So this back here, everything's gonna have to, I have to bring it all up. All right, so I'm, it takes a little bit of time. And so maybe this is not gonna be eight anymore. Maybe it's not gonna be such a bright highlight. Right, so, and then this just has to keep on getting darker and darker and darker. So it's not a lost cause. I can, um, I can always make it work, as Tim Gunn likes to say, right? Um, okay, so I'll, maybe I'll come back. To, I want to get to this here. Uh, and so what I want you to do now is I want you to replicate what you did here on here, but without the guidelines. So this can be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to actually start a little bit on this edge and kind of work my way from the darker over towards the light. So I don't know if it's, it's gonna, I'm going very lightly here. And I'm also turning the pencil occasionally. I think I mentioned that before so that as I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm slowly every once in a while rotating the pencil draw for a little bit more and then rotating it so that I can keep um, tr I'm trying to avoid having any sharp edge on my pencil so coming across keep on and maybe this time I'm, I'm not going quite as far so it's like I'm putting coats of paint onto a wall but it's, but I'm you know if I'm using a roller the you know the first one I go all the way up to the ceiling right the second one, I go just a little bit below the ceiling. And then I keep on going until the I'm putting less and less paint at the top. And as I get down towards the bottom, you know, the bottom I've rolled paint, you know, 20 times. The top, that little right by the ceiling has only been done once, right? In, in the middle, there's maybe 10 coats. Of, does that make sense? Right, so... Um, Let's just keep on going across here. And also I, I should say, as I'm doing this, when I'm getting ready, when I'm sort of finishing, I almost kind of just, the it's like the pencil, it's like a plane taking off. Like there, it's not an abrupt boom, the plane coming right off the surface, the plane's kind of coming and then it just sort of lifts off. And I'm kind of doing that with my pencil so that as I get closer, the, pen, the pencil just sort of comes right off the surface. All right. And I just keep on going. All right. So. So there's our cylinder, right? And if you want it, you could say, well, let's put just a little bit of a, gr not even a gradient, just a little color on the top so that it's not white because it would only be white if there was a light bulb right here shining on that surface. So these need just a little, you know, your level two or on top there, right? Okay, so that's, so, and you can see how even these lines that I had originally drawn in here have kind of disappeared as I've gone across. In here, um, but the, I can see them here because I'm drawing so lightly, but otherwise they've kind of disappeared into them. Um, so let's, um, let's, we're gonna, let's draw another cylinder. I hope you're like, oh, I've had enough of cylinders already. Um, so we got a couple of ellipses and they don't have to be perfect cylinders either. I don't want you spending time frantically erasing, trying to make the perfect cylinder to, for this exercise. All 
Okay, coming down the mountain. And then I'm going to curve in, curve out. It's always, you can always kind of get away with a little bit of um, fudging it a little bit by just widening your pencil lines a little bit, right? So you can kind of, any anytime I've, you can always tell my drawings when there's a little bit of sloppiness is, is the lines just keep getting thicker and thicker. <laughs> okay, oops, and there's my head in the camera view. Okay, so we've got this cylinder here. Now, what we're going to use is we're going to use the hatching method here, and I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to sh well. I mean, I'm going to start on this side, on, on this one here. Uh, often, when people do this hatching method, they go like this. So let's say we we go across, and then we keep on putting, you know, another layer. And, you know, all of this is fine, except when I look at this, I see this, this cylindrical shape that all of a sudden is flat in the middle. To me, this looks like somebody saw a, um, uh, like a, a can and stepped on it, and it's kind of collapsed in the center, and this is flat. We want it to look like it's got volume. So... If we're using the hatching method, instead of drawing lines straight across, we are going to reflect the shape of the cylinder by reflecting these kind of curved lines. So I'm just gonna kind of draw over top. All right, so the curving lines. See how now they're emphasizing the form Oh, this sounds like our daughter upstairs is awake and unhappy. Oh. Oh, and I got a light bulb that just battery camera or light bulb battery that just died on me. Okay, so you can see. Sorry, if you imagine this is number eight, then this row here would be to number. Uh, seven, and then I just did six, and then I'm just drawing more lines in between lines, and just not going quite as far. And I'm also drawing these at the same kind of pressure. So as I'm going here, I'm not pressing any harder. My pencil's getting a little bit dull, and um, as I go here, I'm getting less and less sharp lines. Again, this little shadow of the cylinder here. And I'm, again, shadows can be quite complicated. Like, so often they're not a nice, solid black shape. They often have some variety. of. Sometimes there's light inside the shadow. But for our purpose, I think that's good enough. Okay, so, and, you know, again, I can squint my eyes at it, and, you know, I see some little kind of so-called imperfections where it's almost like little spots have shown up. That's okay. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect, especially when we're learning here.
So this technique, the hatching technique, if you look at um, comic books, for instance, or etching, um, you know, uh, Gustave Doré was a fantastic uh, illustrator, you know, from the, like, we're talking mid-1800s French artist who did uh, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, I think that, uh, who, who wrote that poem? Anyway, he illustrated that with some really beautiful, like, I mean, he's just a, one of the great illustrators and drawers uh, ever, but he used a lot of this hatching technique, and if you imagine, like, a really complicated scene drawn this way, it is just mind-boggling, so... So we've done a cylinder this way, and we're going to do, um, let's, I think, uh, maybe, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to really quickly do a, um, a cross hatched version of a cylinder. You don't have to do this, but if you want to just to see how that effect could work here. I'm just going to draw it for you really quickly. So again, usually when I'm teaching a class, I'm looking around, where is everybody? How far are we? And if uh, everyone's still really far behind, then I can kind of do something like this. So if I was going to try to draw this um, as uh, using cross hatching on this, there's a, lots of different ways to do it. I could basically do this way and then add some vertical lines into it. I could also, let me see, is this, am I gonna embarrass myself if I try to do some curves like this? Let me see. <laughs> kind of like, oh geez, I haven't, I'm thinking I'm on the fly here. So I've got some curved lines coming through here. And I'm trying to work on these kind of arcs. And you know what, I, I'll also show you actually with, um, uh, with these cross hatching is it doesn't, sorry, my head is always seems to be in the way here. Um, it doesn't just have to be two intersecting um, uh, lines going in, in, in two different diagonal directions. You can add as many different lines going in as many different directions as you like. Um... wonder, oh, that looks like it's a little bit out of focus. Maybe is that just because my head keeps <laughs> popping in and out. Um, so I'm just adding more and more little curves on here. And I think you get the point here. So a little quick shadow, and then we're going to move on. So you can see how... There's the blending, hatching, and cross-hatching used in uh, to do this cylinder, right? And maybe I'll just add a little bit of quick cross-hatch to the top. Okay, so... Um, ordinarily, I'd have my tea. I forgot to, to uh, make some tea. It's good to have a little bit of a a break, especially if you're doing a lot of talking. Um, <laughs> so, again, if you got some comments, questions, please leave them in the uh, in the comment section on the computer, and I can uh, if there's any drawings. Maybe you've done some drawings today, and you'd like some feedback. Like, why did my drawing not turn out like yours? What did I do wrong? I'm gonna grab a few more pencils, and I forgot to turn, to turn this another little light on here. Now, is that too much light coming from that direction? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think this one is the one that needs some light. Uh, 
Okay, there we go. That's a little better. So I'm on another page here, and let's we're gonna do a, a let's draw another box. Like this, we're gonna draw a couple of spheres in here. So circles, we're drawing a couple circles. Okay, and let's imagine that these are circles on a table. So um, if I wanna draw the table going in behind here, I'm gonna draw a line and I can Imagine it, I'm drawing very lightly, so if I want to erase, it's pretty easy to erase. Or I can do this, like I, I can imagine this line and I can go across and continue. Because what often happens when people oops, are doing this is, say we've got a, a circle, people would will put, let's say, a line here, and then we got a line there, and then we got this weird table that, you know, is kind of awkward. If you and some artists do that deliberately, but if you don't want that to happen, and make sure, <coughs> excuse me, if you don't want it to happen, don't do it. Um. Oh, did uh, was were people not able to see my drawing on there? Hopefully. Uh, okay, so let's. Uh, to, we're gonna do. You know, I'm, you can keep yours this size. I'm actually going to draw mine bigger because you might not be able to actually see what I'm doing if I do it too small. So let's say I'm going to draw a big circle on the page, and here's my, my table in behind. So what we're going to do now is we are... And I'm just going to flip this over. We're going to imagine some light coming, let's say, from this area. Again, our little light bulb. Ah! You know what? I'm going to use a different perspective here so that I don't keep drawing <laughs> in that square. Okay. So, the first thing I want to do is we are going to put like a, it's like a ring across here. So it's like the cylinder, Got like a ring going through the center. And then I'm going to do another one, and another one. <coughs> and it might be easier for you even to rotate your sketchbook. And then as I get up here, it's kind of like a an oval shape. So I want to do something, and I'm even going to come back and round out some of these corners. So it's like a striped beach ball. And if I'm happy with the kind of the shape of this ball, I'm just going to kind of go over it and kind of darken it a little bit. Just, uh, and it doesn't have to be perfectly round. If you, if you want, you can always get like a, a peanut butter jar or something to trace the shape around. Like, whoa, that is a lopsided sphere. In fact, I'm just going to add a little bit more to it. Okay, that, see, that looks, uh, solved my problem there. And this is, that's fine because this is going to be the dark side. So let's just darken this side of the sphere. And then let's, I'm gonna put a little shadow under here, right? So it's just like a little ellipse. And then I'm gonna darken this in really quickly. So now let's imagine that this, you don't, you probably don't want to write this on your drawing, but let's say, how many rings do we have? Uh, let's say this is our number eight. I don't know if I have 
And let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is zero now, right? So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So if each one of these is a different level of value or of tone, then we're just going to kind of uh, use the side of our pencil to shade in. Let's see, that one's a little bit too dull. And I'm using the side of my pencil to color this in. So maybe that was too, isn't dark enough. But before I'd start darkening it, you know what? I'm just going to keep on going. And maybe, you know what? I'm going to go back to over here to number seven and just add a little bit so that I know kind of how light I need to go. All right. So I'm kind of adding. You can also see the way that I'm shading this here. Again, I'm holding my pencil from, from uh, a little ways away. And as I'm kind of shading this, you can see how my, you know what, I'm gonna go back to that view I had before because I need the extra space. So um, I'm holding my pencil far away like this. And then I'm trying, I want to use this kind of arcing kind of quality. trying to emphasize the roundness of the sphere this way. So right now, I've got a lot of number sevens here. So I can now, it's, it's sort of like I'm building a bridge, right? And I gotta get from both sides of this canyon to the other. So I'm kind of building a little bit, sometimes doing a little bit more on one side and the other side kind of meets it. So, Um, it's a little easier to get away to be sloppier in the darker areas than it is in the lighter areas in the lighter areas you got to be a little bit more careful in some of the darker areas especially in the black you can just scribble that in it doesn't need to be as kind of tightly controlled as because it's it's going to be mostly hidden right it's just it's going to just disappear Right, so as I'm coming around, getting closer here, I'm just getting a little bit darker. So and as I'm doing it, like I'm, the pencil is, is almost just laying kind of limp on the page here. I'm not forcing it down. I'm kind of just allowing it to kind of ride around and that way it's barely leaving a mark on the on the page but it's the accumulation of all of those little tiny barely visible scratches that slowly darken this now i'm gonna i'm i'm going slowly to do this if i wanted to kind of pick up the pace right well then i just end up pressing harder on my pencil and when we can kind of you know, uh, I'll get this to a, a a bit more of a finished drawing a little bit quicker. But this kind of method, this kind of blending method, is great if you're um, if you're really really patient and you um, uh, you know you're really if you're feeling kind of tentative. Right, then it's, it's just a matter of slowly building things up. And if you go kind of slowly, it's it's hard to make those kind of sudden mistakes. Although I will say they, they happen all the time. Sometimes you accidentally press too hard in a certain place and then you get really frustrated at yourself. I, I wouldn't worry so much about that. Like I think most people, when they see your drawing, are not going to see the imperfections that you can't take your eyes off of right okay i think you understand where i'm going with this because what i want to do is i want to do this again 
So if I go back to this page, um, I want to do this. And this will be one of the last drawings we do um, on another sphere, but without those kind of guideline um, on it originally. So if this was my drawing and we have our light source up here, um, I want to leave this highlight here where the, the, the hot spot is hitting it and gradually getting darker. So if I was to do this sphere, Right, I'm just kind of making these arcing shapes and getting lighter and lighter and lighter. And then I'm just kind of coming back into the other side. Oh, and, and so you see the way that I'm just kind of holding my pencil and kind of just doing this arcing shape. Like I'm making dozens of these kind of marks, right? I'm just going up and up and up and up. And then as I as I go into the darker areas, I'm pressing harder and I can just kind of speed this up by just really darkening in that part of the drawing. Right? And if we just, if we take our time, we can build something that looks really pretty special. Right? Yeah, it's just a, it's just a ball on a table. But if you draw a ball on a table that looks really effective, and it looks like a three-dimensional shape sitting there, that's really cool. That's, that's a, that's something most people don't believe that they're ever going to be able to do and you're doing it right it's it, all of this stuff you know my my one of my goals not just with this class but but in life in general is to simplify and demystify um art and make it more um accessible for people to um, execute on their own. You know, there, I won't go into too much of a tangent. Is my overhead camera not working? Um, you can't see what you're doing. A comment here. I think everything's still working fine. Is anybody having technical problems there? Um, uh, back huh camera cut out is I, I it's hard for me to know what uh wow there's a lot of comments saying something's happened here that's weird um whoa look at all these comments page is disabled can't see it your camera's off camera cut out it's good. Weird. Okay. Well, I don't know what happened there. Um, sorry about that. Um, was my head in the way? <laughs> that could have. Uh, could be my my big head sometimes gets in the way. Anyway, so we've got this sphere like that. So um, this is in a cheap. If you want to take this to another level, then what we can do. And if you take my taking my painting class, you've we've done this with paint, right? We can just sort of darken in the table a little bit. Oops, this pencils. Some of these pencils need a sharpen. So I'm just gonna let's say So we have this. Let's say we're going to add a little shadow under here. And 
And then we can even, if we want, let's say, I'm gonna darken up at the top of the table or the far away edge. I think it's lighter towards us. Don't worry, again, you know, this whole thing of like drawing outside of the lines or coloring inside the lines and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's not really a con in fact there's a lot of people who actually really like the look of the of these pencil lines coming off the edge um you know if you wanted if this was like for a special project or something you could just cut it right out and glue it on something else um okay so the last thing that uh we're gonna do here well you know what i'm gonna give i'll show you a couple of things I'll show you a couple of uh, things that we can draw, and then that'll, because we have, you know, uh, what, five days until our next class, so I'm going to give you two things to draw in the meantime. So let me just bring up an image here. second to get everything in order. Ah. Okay. So I've just put an image onto the screen here. And this image is of uh, some circles or a sphere, a, a, a cube, and a cylinder, right? So we're gonna try drawing this. We're gonna sketch it out. And then if you wanna do some shading over the course of the week, you can continue working on it. You can kind of take a screenshot of this or you can pause it and work from it. Um, so let me show you, what's the best way for me to show you how to do this? Let me see, give me one, another second here. Let's put this here and let's put this there. Or you know what, let's do the opposite. Let's do Sorry, trying to, how to do this the best way possible. Maybe, oops, that needs to be a bit bigger. Hmm. Okay, so what you see on the screen is this image. Let's make it even bigger. No, I won't go. Ah. Okay, so... I'm going to try drawing this on here. So uh, it's almost, it doesn't have to be a perfect shape. You know, like, look at my wobbly squares here. Um, and then, so to, the first thing I would do is identify where is the middle of this drawing. So not necessarily where the table is going to be, but what we call the horizon line. And we're going to be drawing... Um, horizon lines next week, so that's just a kind of a little tip. Here, I'm making another guideline in the center. And, you know, for this one, I'm actually just going to break out some colored pencils so that it kind of help you see what I'm doing. The first thing I'm going to do is draw, um, is I'm going to identify where the background is. So if this is the center of that photo, the, the table is actually, I'm not going to and I'm going to draw this darker. These, this pink is going to be for really lightly drawn lines. So I'm going to draw it very lightly. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify where the cylinder goes. All right, so I'm drawing, trying to figure out where the shape is. 
you know, again, you could use, you know, uh, some kind of thing in your kitchen to trace around. I would encourage you to try just to, don't worry about it looking a little bit, you know, like a flat basketball or something. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is draw this uh, cylinder. And just so I know that it's going to fit here on the table, I'm going to draw the bottom first this time. It's kind of different than what we've been doing before. And let's say, I mean, I, I can visualize where this goes, but I can imagine some people might struggle with that. So I'm actually going to draw the sides first, right? And then now I've got to fit a cylinder into this space. Right, so I'm drawing. Now, that looks a little bit weird. This uh, ellipse needs to kind of become more narrow. Right, so. And you can see that I'm, I'm kind of, I'm just sketching things in. I'm not um, putting too much pressure on myself to get it right, the, right off the bat. Now we're gonna draw a cube in a way that is slightly different than we've done it before. So to draw this cube, I'm going to kind of draw like a diamond shape here on the table. I got this diamond kind of shape. And then it's it's kind of like the table on, is on its side, like right, and then I'm going to draw the diamond back on here. Okay, so if I'm happy with where all of this is, you know, let's say I'm going to use another color here. What, what color will show up? This color is going to be, I'm going to use some green to show where some shadows are going to be. So before I start this drawing, We've got the light source is actually off on this side. So I'm going to draw, this is kind of the, this point in the, in the image where it's actually the darkest part of the sphere, because on the back of the sphere, we have light reflecting off the cube onto the back of the sphere. So here's the shadow. I know some of you are like, oh man, you're really showing us something, some big concept right here at the end, right before we finish. That's okay. I, I mean, if you if you are kind of burnt out and you're like, oh man, we've done a lot, that's totally fine, right? You, um, I want just to kind of introduce where this is. Um, and then for some people who want a little bit of extra, they can work on this over the course of the weekend. So I've just been, oh, I need the shadow for this cube. And let's say that shadow would, is gonna kind of go off into that direction. So if I've outlined where everything goes, then I can just start coming in and shading it. So I'm gonna, maybe the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of go back over some of my lines Okay, just outlining things. Now I'm also remembering that, that that cylinder is obscured a little bit by the, the sphere and the cube. So, so I've got those shapes in there. If I had an eraser, I don't think this is the well, no, it's not going to, well, it works a little bit. You could try to do a little bit of erasing with colored pencils. Colored pencils don't erase, or not, well, not as effectively as your regular graphite pencil. And that's just because of what the is inside of them and how they're made. Especially the cheaper pencils have a lot of wax in them, and they just do not erase well at all. There are times I would say that times you don't really want to use an eraser too much because not only it'll call attention to itself um, and create some smudges. Okay, 
so um how about i'm going to come back to this because this might be for some people who are just like whoa i can't do that it's above my pay grade so if that's too much for you what i'm going to do is let's come back to um no i want for a final drawing for today We're having a more technical problems. Is that did it cut out again? Weird. Okay. Um, okay. I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, so anyway, the, for the, a last little thing here, what I would suggest to do is I want you to trace your hand. Now you can use the back side of your hand or the palm of your hand i would actually say drawing the palm of your hand so it's this is going to be a little bit awkward i i totally understand um oh you can see sorry the wrong thing on the monitor here right so this is kind of a little bit tricky is you put your hand down here and if if it's really tricky then get a friend or a family member to help you and you don't want to draw too dark, right? This is just the outline, right? And then we take our hand off and we've got an image. And then, so I can see where my hand goes, just maybe, bef so um, I can put my hand roughly back. It doesn't have to be in the same place, but I'm just going to make some marks where the big head out of the way, where these joints of my fingers are, all right? I'll move my hand in a second once I've done all that. All right, so you can see this just now tells me that really quickly this is where my joints of my fingers are. And then um, in this area here, where the hand, uh, where the fingers meet my hand, and then I've got all of the different um, lines on my hand. So, what I would suggest you do, another quick little exercise, um, is to try drawing your hand and add some shading or shade your drawing of your hand and see how realistic you can make it, right? So if I just, if I look at my hand like this, and I was to say like, what are the different values that I have on here? Well, I'm, I've, I'm actually holding it onto a white piece of paper. Are there any places on this that are pure white, that are so bright? Not really, I don't think there's anything that's a level eight, except, you know, on my ring, there's maybe a couple of quick reflections on here. All right, so even, let's say if I draw my ring in here, there might be a couple little places that are number eight, right? Otherwise, and it, this, then the other, it, what do I have here that is number one? Well, a few, like when I'm looking at this, I see like a little number one area here. And then I see on the page, if I want, because I think it'd be really cool if you also did the shadows, I'm going to have some number one in here. So everything else in this drawing to me looks somewhere between number two and number six and five, All right? So in that, and that means that basically the whole drawing could have pencil marks over top of it. You know, sometimes people will do this and there's just going to be a little bit of shading here, a little bit here, a little bit here, and everything else is like pure white. Well, unless you are like super jaundiced or something, right? You're, you have some color in your skin, right? So it's not going to be pure white. So I want, if you're going to do this, is to, to really, you know, take the, you could even just lay down a foundation of, of just like you can kind of go over your whole hand 
really lightly. All right, just kind of filling it in. And then as you, to, to shade it, you could use hatching, cross hatching, stippling, blending, whatever, you know, if you were gonna use some of uh, the hatching, then as we go over, we would expect, you know, the lines to kind of curve as they go across. In fact, one of the things you may wanna do is just kind of go over. Now, if you're looking straight on an object, it's probably gonna be not very big curves. I don't even know if you can see any of the stuff I'm drawing. But what I would say is try to draw that hand. And then if you want, you can even try doing these shapes and kind of shading those in. So does that make, uh, does that make sense? Oh, well, we're at like 520. Okay. So what I want to do, I know, I know there's a few images that people have sent. So I want to pull those up and to give a little bit of feedback to those people that sent in images. Maybe to, uh, a little bit as I do some of that, I'll come back and, and I think I'm going to work a little bit more on this drawing for people that are interested. Otherwise, if, uh, if, you're, if I've exhausted you, <laughs> then you're welcome to uh, take the weekend. And, and I know here in Vancouver, it's supposed to be a little bit nice and maybe it's nice where you are. If you are gonna go outside your home, try to do it safely, wear a mask, wear some gloves, try to keep your safe distance from all of your uh, other people in your community so we can um, get back to life as normal as quickly as normal. And um, um, okay, so if, if, if you're heading out, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you want to send a, a small donation, the link to the PayPal is below. And I've been very fortunate. Some of you have, have been very generous, so I really appreciate that. It really, um, your support means a lot to me. And I, um, all those little pennies make it this, doing this feel like it's actually worthwhile. So, um, okay, so let me bring up some uh, things, I think, how do I find all this? If you've sent me them, let me see. I know I've got a few Facebook messages, I think, here. Um, okay, let me download that. I got one here. Do I have? Is there more of them? Okay, so I got one there. Yeah, I got Instagram. I don't know if anybody sent me on Twitter here. Okay, so how about uh, I see a you. Uh, Heidi sent me some stuff, so let me, let's bring up your, um, where's my computer version here? Hmm. Okay, sorry, it's just taking me a second here. Okay, so here's Heidi Kelly's um, Instagram here. Look at all these beautiful photos and drawings, paintings, cool knitting. And I think these are drawings that you wanted. Yeah, you've tagged me in here. Um, just if you, uh, in the future to tag, just add a little, uh, is it the at symbol in, in, in front? That way, because I, I, this didn't immediately come up. Um, but anyway, it's your drawing. Let's see if we can make that a little bit bigger. Oh, kind of 
and gets a little silly when you get too big. <sighs> hmm. Okay, I guess I just can't go too big. I'll have to keep it that size so I can see the whole drawing. Very cool, Heidi. Um, I, I like this kind of wood texture that you've created here. Of uh, it's, It looks like a, a tree trunk with almost like a heart-shaped uh, like knot in there. And then all of those kind of squiggles and patterns in the background. I like it. Oh, a tree with a heart. Okay, I, that's the title. I should have just read the title. Um, I, I think the the texture you put on the tree looks fantastic. Which camera? That one there. The texture on the tree is fantastic. That turned out really, really well. Um, and the, the the texture around that the heart uh, on the tree is also super effective. Like, and there's a little shadow underneath it that helps it really pop off. And the way that you've kind of rounded the pieces. So that's really effective. I think that there's the tree looks great as it is. Um, I think your background looks more, looks more doodle-esque. You know, it's much more simplified. And um, I would... It would be, I mean, there's some, it's something to be said about a contrast between kind of a more refined style and a looser style kind of on the same page together. Um, but I, in this case, it, it makes me do feel like the, the doodly part is, um, it's a little bit detracting from the, the, the tree trunk. Like, the tree trunk, I think, is fantastic. So I kind of feel like I want to see the background elevated a little bit, and you put more attention into the background. Um, or, and, and that could be just adding a little bit more detail into it or darkening it dramatically. Um, and uh, I'm not sure, you know, like, there's, you've got, like, a question mark and exclamation mark and, and some you know, other punctuation all of the, in, you know, I'm not sure if they are necessarily complementing the tree and the heart as much. And then the squiggles on the left side, that just kind of feels like you're filling in that space. I mean, I, so I, if you've, you've done such a beautiful job on the tree trunk, I kind of wanted to see you would also apply some, the, some of your ability into the other space rather than just filling it up with stuff. Um... Uh, Overall, really great drawing. I just think it, it can be better. There's Whenever I look at my own drawings, I always think they can be much better. Wow, fantastic. Look at this face. Doodles. So, um, that's wild. So this is great. It looks like you've, you've like taken just this abstract amoeba-like outline and then started filling it in with facial features. And then you started doing this shading that we've been talking about uh, today to give it that volume and to make it look three-dimensional. And um, I don't have a lot to add to it. I think it's really fantastic. It was really great to see your imagination in here and to see like the stitching around the lips there, the kind of collar, how you've done. The collar, I think, is really effective. I think if anything, areas that could be improved is maybe the... I don't know if it's like some tassels or worms or rope or whatever it is that's kind of kind of holding that mask that appears to be. I think those look like they could use a little more attention, and the hair looks like it could use a little more attention. And what I would do, especially for the hair, is think instead of one big block of hair, is going in and trying to kind of articulate more hairs in there. So as you're shading it, you're not just kind of randomly doing this, but thinking about like going in and emphasizing that form with the hair. That looks great. I don't think there's, you know, especially if this is your what you're doing as a doodle, it's really cool. What I think is even really neat is there's, I guess I the these are supposed to be eyelids. Right, these those look like the intent is for these to be eyelids and eyelashes. Obviously, in my mind, however, I see this as like a cavity, like a the 
what, ocular cavity, eye cavity, and then the eye, this being an eyeball right here, and almost like one eyeball shared by both eyes. And then this is like the inside of the skull here. That's kind of what, how, I, and I actually think that looks really cool. Um, maybe it's not what you intended. If you wanted to make this look more like the eyelid, um, instead of these, I would maybe have lines that kind of curve this way around on, on either side. Um, and then maybe de-emphasize this quite hard line in here. And this might have been done much softer because this, it, be, with this really hard outline here, it looks more like this is... Um, not just a fold in, in the eye, but a, an opening into another space in behind, if that makes sense. Okay, great artwork. Thanks for sending those to me. Um, there's a, a couple more that people sent. Um, this is, oh, or just, uh, yes, the hair was really bad. I was using a 4B pencil. <laughs> um, I'm going to bring this one up. This is Sam. Sam sent this in. And that looks cool. Look at this beautiful bird. I, I don't know anything about birds. I'm not a birder or bird watcher. I, I like birds. They kind of terrify me a little bit. I've taken lots of photographs of birds. Um, uh, Birds and, and spiders, just their their movements are kind of seem unpredictable to me, so I, I'm always a little bit anxious around them. Not that I, I don't like them, I just probably wouldn't have either one as a pet. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, this looks really cool. It's a little bit pixelated because of the, 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 probably the way Facebook sends messages, but um, so I can't see all the fine detail in here, which it looks like you put in into the uh into the feathers here i don't really have too much to add to it except i think what this drawing could use some more of is it might be nice to see a little bit more of whatever it's standing on like i don't it's not clear to me what this is is this like a fence post or a piece of you know a, a corn cob or or is it a pencil or uh, a, a tree branch. I don't. I don't know because this sort of just kind of ends right here on the end. So I don't. I feel like it either would extend further in some direction, or there would be something else here. Um, having said, it is kind of the way that you faded it out is kind of nice. It's nice to see it kind of fade out here. Um, I also want to see maybe a little bit more contrast and for it to get darker like it would be nice i think under the wing i expect to see a little bit more shadow i'd like to see maybe some darkening under here and maybe under here and even you can get really dark so it's a, it's that contrast between light and dark and i think a lot of people you know if we go back to um uh i think a lot of people, when they're drawing, they kind of stick to... Come on. Oh, where do I have to be? Um, they are... A lot of people stay in this range here. And drawings kind of... Or especially in this, if we go to the blending, are kind of done in around here. And people don't allow themselves to get really, really dark. And by going dark, you, you add more depth into your drawing. Um, when when you don't have that darkness, things can sometimes look like they are like there's a lot of atmosphere in between us. Like there's um, because if, if for instance, if you just open your door right now and and you look outside, you'll see. And let's say you you have an object, your hand. You hold your hand up. You're gonna see your hand is gonna. Look, the colors are gonna be more vivid the the shadows and everything would be more vivid and then if you look at the house across the street or the building or the tree it's going to be softer in color it's blacks in its shadows aren't going to be as dark as the shadows on your hand and then if you look at the mountain way off in the distance even the shadows on the mountain aren't going to be perfectly black they might actually be rather than level one they are going to be level four 
So when I see people's darkest value in their drawing at like a four or a three, if we use this kind of scale, what it, it makes me think is that there's a lot of space in between us. And then I'm seeing something kind of far away and that there's, you know, the, the atmosphere, like particles in the air that are, are diffusing the light, right? So, I mean, great color. I mean, I love all the color in your, in your image. Um, the contrast of color is beautiful and the attention to detail with that kind of uh, aqua blue in, in the feathers by the, on the head up in this area here is also really nice. So it's just a matter of just pushing the darkness just a little bit. Okay, let me see. Um, where, I think we had a couple more in here. And then this, I thought it was, it was fantastic. Um, this is a drawing by Ramon, who is, was a student in, he's been in a, a few of my classes before. Why is, uh, and so I just wanted to bring that up. He sent this to me asking for, or you sent it to me, you're, maybe you're still watching, uh, Ramon. You sent this to me to give you feedback on it. I remember you, I, I think you, this is the drawing you were working on in class. Maybe you've subsequently done another one, but uh, just so people know, you were working on this kind of in while I was teaching class, and you were just sketching me, and uh, and I thought the the ver I think this is a fantastic drawing, and you, I think you, in your email to me you said uh, you know I'm well. I, I have to read some of it because I just thought it made me laugh a little bit here, and uh, in the best way. But um, I took your acrylic and drawing classes at the Mount Pleasant in February and March. I'm now drawing the class. Following your classes online, please criticize the attached drawing today if you have time. I am 77 years old or so and do not have much time to get better. A frank opinion is best for me. I, I I'm sorry for reading that, but I just. I, you know, so you you want the harshest criticism I can give you because you want to get better, and I, I I actually really appreciate that. That's not everybody is willing to to um, or really wants like real you know harsh feedback or potentially harsh feedback. Um, so you you have a really open spirit, and uh, I I really think that's that's really important for for making art or any kind of creative or really anything in life is to is to not taking things so personally and to to actively solicit feedback i think is important that's why i encourage anybody to send me pictures because um but i think this is fabulous you know if if I, if I am a little bit shorter and i think looking into this camera where i gotta go this way I think you've done a pretty good job, and you were doing this while I was moving all over the place. And you, I, I, you'll have to remind me. You had a really interesting process for doing this, of kind of drawing the drawing and then tr tracing the drawing, drawing it over and over again until you got better and better. I mean, what can I say? You're using all the techniques that we've been talking about here. You know, the, you've got a really nice blending. Um, you know the the we can this feels like a different texture than the texture of my skin it's weird to be evaluating and drawing of myself um you know like what would i say in order to help um i don't know like i think You know, if you were to, to make it more accurate to me, potentially my eyes could be slightly further apart. So they're maybe a little bit close towards one another. You really want to think at least one eye length in between these eyes. Um, so they could, this eye could go just a little tad to the left. And potentially, you know, there is usually either around one, another eye length on either side or half an eye, depending. So it's 
possible this, but so you could bring this side of the both faces in just a little bit tighter in so it's not so wide. I mean, I would like to think that I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm not a thin guy. <laughs> um, but um, I, I don't think, I mean, uh, proportionally, I think you've you've got it. And the, the fact that you were drawing this from life rather than from a photograph is quite amazing. Um, I think in the hair, the hair looks a little bit scribbly. It looks, again, when I'm always telling people, it's trying to kind of draw each, like not drawing every strand on its own, but it does feel a little bit rushed. So it feels like, you know, for instance, parts, and that's, this is not unusual. In fact, we were just talking about another drawing that way. Um, I would say most of the time, that's how people approach things, is that there are parts of a, an image that people work really, really, um, uh, uh, you know, they, they take a lot of time to develop, and then other parts that they kind of go go fast on. So, for instance, often when people are drawing a portrait, they spend a lot of time on the eyes and nose and the mouth, and then, and so then they spend a little bit less time on the hair, a lot less time on the clothes, right, and then virtually n no time at all, if any, on the background. That's just how a lot of people work, and. That uh, in, in art school, I was taught you want to apply the same amount of attention to detail to the whole image. So that it's not just one little part of the picture that is getting your artistic attention. You're you know, being generous to the whole rest of the composition. So, I mean... And you could, like, an example of somebody who does this really effectively is Vincent van Gogh, or Vincent van Gogh, right, as I think you're technically supposed to say his name. So he, what he does is he does a great job in his backgrounds. Like, he, he never, very rarely left his backgrounds blank. He would always kind of fill them in with something. I'm not saying that you need to, but at, you may want to consider putting in a gradient of, uh, a, of some kind of shadow, you know, like, like in behind me, you know, you, there could be a little shadow in here. Um, it could have flowers or a pattern. Um, just something to think of, like how to add a little bit more dimension or, or in space into the picture. Um, other little things that I notice is it looks like there's a few places where you were drawing and then erasing, and then that's what happens when you draw and then erase is i wonder if i can just reproduce that effect so let's say i make a bunch of lines and then i try to erase those lines and then do you notice how like even though th those lines were virtually gone by shading over top of them those lines have reappeared and that's a function of you know when i'm Whenever you're using a pencil on paper, you know, so this is my pencil, you know, I'm making, and we're just looking from the side, this is my piece of paper. Wherever I'm drawing lines, I'm kind of, I'm pressing into the paper, and I'm, what's uh, the opposite of embossing? Uh, you know, embossing comes up off the surface, and then whatever that is. So you're kind of creating these little valleys, and then you're erasing, and then you're kind of trying to, so you no longer have this even surface, so when you go over top of it, it starts to bring out some, some lines. So anyway, I go back to your drawing. It, I can see some of those kind of erasure points. I am talked about erasure briefly earlier. Does it bother me? No. Doesn't bother me personally. I, I mean, I wrote part of my master's thesis on uh, the on the idea of erasure and this for me it's the evidence of an artist's eye looking at something and that kind of you know 
the the desire to to get it right and so I like seeing that. I like seeing some of those places where you could see an artist was working into an area. Um, having said that, I know a lot of people, especially when they're beginning, those points that I love so much are parts that cause the most frustration to other people when of, in their own drawings. But the, but I would say most people would look at this drawing and not see any problems in it whatsoever. Um, and likewise, I I don't really have anything negative to say about it. I know you want the harshest comment I can give you. There's not a lot I can say. If if my if I had students at Emily Carr draw a picture like this, I'd be really excited for them. And that you're able to do this and you were taking my classes makes me really really happy and and proud of you. So. Um, you know, the other little things too. I like how even this, the bottom, um, you know, you, you didn't outline, let's say the bottom of this eyelid like you did here. And you've just allowed some of the white of the eye to kind of delineate that. And we know what an eye looks like. So you can take some, a little bit of creative, um, license here. Right, so maybe there's a, there was a highlight when you were drawing me that you decided not to do that there. Um, anyway, it doesn't bother me. The other, I guess the other little thing, and it kind of comes back to when it last, the end of last class in the Q&A, I was talking about, you know, often people when they're shading things use kind of draw left to right. And because that's just the way our, our, the, our, the, our body works. So when you're shading things, instead of just going left to right or this diagonal, is to try to curve around the form, right? And when I look at, at your drawing here, there's not, I don't really see lines that are curving around the form. Like I always think of like carving with your pencil into the space around it, right? So I would kind of like to see lines that go around this shape, right? To kind of help reinforce that this is not a flat image, but a round image, you know? Um, but the way that you have shaded it does give you that illusion. You're just asking, how can I make it even better going forward? Well, really think about like, if this, if this was a piece of wood and you had to, you wanted to make it look, you know, and it was a, a two by four, you know, it's a flat piece of wood and you're going to chisel it out to, to make it look round so that you could turn it and see the nose popping out from the side. Then you'd have to kind of chisel in and around that shape. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, uh, Sam says he sent me another image. Uh, and then I just got a few more comments. Uh, so maybe, maybe Sam, I'll, I'll take a look at your drawing next week. I, I'm sorry I didn't uh, see the other one there. Um, Peter says, can you talk about how holding, how to hold a pencil when hatching, stippling, blending? I find my hand gets tired, and then I'll use my wrist more, and then my hand touches the page and smudges the pencil marks. Okay. Um, so... <clears throat> Holding the pencil, there's, there's no, again, I don't want to say that there's a right way to hold a pencil or a wrong way to hold a pencil. It's whatever comes most efficiently and comfortable for you. Because if you're going to be drawing for extended period of time, an hour, your hand is going to get sore. So, especially if you're trying something different or new, you could, you know, work up the strength to be able to do it easier, but maybe that's not uh, always the you, not everybody has t time to, to work out their hand um if i was if i'm doing hatching i probably you know very rarely i would just say on a, on a right off the top i'm you know if i'm writing something to somebody and i i keep a journal and i write in my journal every day uh when i'm writing my you know hand is pretty close to the tip of the pencil right? Where I use a, a, a pen, but, um, for my journal, but either way, it's, it's pretty, 
Whereas when I'm drawing, I already tend to kind of move back a little bit. That just, um, for a number of things, it, it if my hand is really close to the tip, it's going to force my hand onto the page, right? The, the further my hand gets from the point, the easier it is for me to have my hand floating off the page. Does that make sense? Like if I held it really tight and I want to keep my hand kind of floating off the page, and I'll just kind of, right? If I want my hand to kind of float off the page, if I'm drawing really close, it's just, that's almost like physically impossible, right? And I kind of have to now lift my elbow up to do this. If, however, I, I go back a little bit more, you know, and so when I'm, if I'm holding the pencil further like this, I, I can still use my shoulder more and my wrist less because it's now floating off. You know, it's, it's like, it's, there's just more space between my hand and the paper, if that makes sense. Um, so the other thing too is if you are making a drawing and let's see, I got a piece of scrap. Well, you know, you can be pretty creative with, with scrap paper. So let's say here's just like a gum wrapper, right? If I want to prevent my hand from getting dirty and I'm, while I'm drawing, I can use another piece of paper, right? In this case, I'll just flip it just so you can see what I'm doing. I can put that down so that I can draw over top of it without smudging my hand on things below. So it's just like you just put it in place, draw for a little bit, move it, pick it up. So, and you just have to want to be kind of mindful just to see how much pencil marks is applying here because that's just going to help prevent the graphite from getting onto your hand, which is not necessarily a problem. You know, you just wash your hand, but if you start smudging your hand all over the place, it's just going to make a mess. Um, and then... So I hope that answers your question, Peter. And... Place, and so Sam is saying something similar. Okay, wow, almost two hours. I, and I can't believe how many people are still watching. Um, so I think we will we'll call it a session here. I really want to thank everybody who had uh, who stuck with me for this long. Like that's pretty incredible to have uh, I don't know how many people we have here still watching away here. How do I? Um, oops, not that one, wherever I put it, wherever my, my browser went <laughs> somewhere here. So I can't, I can't even see what's going on anymore, but, um, uh, yeah, I'm really, really honored that so many of you guys are participating in this following watching. I mean, I'm hoping you're drawing while I'm doing this and not just watching. I think you're going to get far less out of it than you will if you're actually drawing. I'd love to see people continue these exercises, trying to draw these shapes or try to, and or drawing your hand and then shading on your hand. And if you do a really cool drawing like that, then send me the results. That'd be really cool to see. You know, if we get five or six of them out of the 60 people who are watching in real time or the other 400 or so people that watch the video afterwards, you know, five or six of them would be really cool to see. Um, so you, there's all the different ways to send them to me. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you're really, really happy, send a donation would be much appreciated. Uh, it goes into my daughter's, um, uh, what kind of fund, college fund. Uh, <laughs> so, um, she is the beneficiary of all of that. So I appreciate it. Okay, thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Stay safe. Stay home if you can. And while you're at home, make some drawings. Be super productive. And then you'll, after, when all this is over and we come out of it, um, you'll have produced all of this fantastic artwork. Okay, everybody, take care. We'll see you next week.